Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise? Or, if you're driving, please stay in your seat and continue to drive. We really don't want you to get hurt. As we celebrate America's 244th birthday this weekend, please join the host of the wrestling show, Bill Yankovey, as he joins the United Servo Academy Men's Chorus and their choral director, Vice Brigadier Sir Thomas Bullhead Servo, as they sing the United Servo Academy Men's Chorus hymn. Here's to the guys and gals who like to fly, flying so high with some guy in the sky, sky rockets in flight, afternoon delight, captain high at your service. Would you like to fly in my beautiful balloon? Take these broken wings and learn to fly me to the moon. Sail on silver bird. Have you ever heard that the bird is the word? In a big country, dreams stay with you. Come along with me, Lucille, in my merry Oldsmobile. We are kids for saving Earth. We are fans of Colin Firth. Off we go to yonder blue. We really move our tails for you. Cross the wide Missouri. Ah, ah, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. That was the United Servo Academy Men's Chorus. Uh, and that sonorous tone that you heard, of course, has to be due in large part to the Hello, everybody, and welcome to That Wrestling Show, the podcast where all pro wrestling matters. I am your host, Bill, joined as always by Fro. How you doing, Fro? tiddle do This is a special episode because uh, this week I am once again here in Parts Unknown. Uh, sort of has become an annual tradition here. Um, and Fro, you know, this is your first time doing an yeah. episode, doing an episode with me while I'm in Parts Unknown. And, this is my first episode. <laughs> yeah, your first, yeah, first episode. And, first ever episode, never been on this show before. Exactly. And yeah. there's actually a special presentation here. Oh, really? Yes, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome, if you don't mind, the mayor of Parts Unknown. Wow. Today we recognized on Friday, June the 3rd, 2020, it will now be known as Fro Day here <gasps> in Parts Unknown. Part Fro Day is a made-up holiday. It's not a real holiday. Fro, how about that? These lovely people have honored you <laughs> with your own day. I'm so I'm so moved. I'm moved to tears. I want to thank Bell, Luke, everybody that has stand behind me all these years. My mom, my dad, and God, I love you. That's what my you say in a thank you speech, isn't it? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. 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 So yeah, no, not a lot of uh, WWE news this week. They have. Uh, 
be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, sort of. Uh, but we nice-ish. Nice, nice-ish. yeah, nice-ish. Um, the they made big news last night. Um, and this was pretty much expected. Uh, from what we had talked about the last few weeks, WWE has acquired Evolve Wrestling. Uh, I'm so shocked. I didn't say that four weeks ago. <laughs> um, so, so shocked. What they're getting out of this, besides mm. the name itself, which if WWE wanted to, they could use it again sometime in the near future, although I, I doubt they will. They will not. <laughs> um, Spoiler alert, exactly. they will never ever do it. <laughs> but the big thing that they are getting is the video library that mm-hmm. Evolve Wrestling has. And it is almost 150 shows of Evolve Can you Wrestling. believe that? That, that is so much. For a 10-year period, that's pretty good. Yeah. And then, because uh, Mike Johnson did uh, a, had all the details on this, very well done, they are also going to get Dragon Gate USA footage mm. as well. So if you had not seen an Evolve show, if you had not seen a Dragon Gate USA show... Once, you know, WWE goes through the videos and figures out, you know, what they're going to put up on the network, you get bet your bottom dollar, it will be on the WWE network. Not right away, obviously, but... I think I think we're talking probably six months. I, I'd say six months to a year. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere there. That would, that would be my guess. Yeah. It takes a lot of time, and it's also, like... Uh, they have to clear out audio if there's like song copyright things like that. Mm-hmm. So, well, the good thing with Evolve Wrestling is, as far as I remember, they did not use a lot of copyrighted material like songs, right? If any, I, I can't think of too many off the top of my head. So yeah, and to be honest, I don't think I ever seen an evolve wrestling thing in my life. I'm not sure. I think maybe I saw a pay per view with right. you, but that's that's like super long time ago. But the talent that you know went through Evolve Wrestling, a mm. lot of them have ended up in WWE. Some of them have ended up, you know, in other places, AEW. Um, I mean, Johnny Gargano is like the first name that probably pops up. Um, Matt Riddle more recently, Mm -hmm. Ricochet, Rich Swan, Keith Lee, Brody Lee, John Moxley was there for a little bit. Uh, Sammy Callahan, Tim Thatcher, so many people, you know, uh, have been in Evolve Wrestling that will probably end up being put up on the WWE Network. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as what the owners are going to do, meaning uh, Sal Hamoy and Gabe Sapolsky, Hamoy will be focusing on the remaining promotions under the WWN banner that's the World Wrestling Network, uh, streaming uh, weekly live events on their website from Florida as soon as it is legally allowed, uh, which includes... Full Impact Pro, Shine, and ACW. Um, As far as Gabe Sapolsky goes, there is no word on what he is going to do. Yeah, and I'm going to be very mean now and say that I I probably don't think he will have a job in WWE. I don't see that happening anytime soon. I, I could see him... Maybe taking a break for a while. Yeah. Maybe do a podcast. Because I think mm-hmm. I think Gabe would have very good stories to tell. Yeah, and if you're listening to this, Gabe, contact us. You know, uh, being in ECW and Ring of Honor, 
and yeah. evolve. I think he would have tremendous stories to discuss and tell. And then if he gets the itch, I, I think he might come back, but I don't see it being for a while. Me neither. So, but I will say Evolve Wrestling, while it won't have the lasting impact of an ECW or a Ring of Honor or even a TNA, it still it was an important part in pro wrestling because of the stars it Definitely. created. So, oh yeah, and like we said many times before, it has been a breeding ground for many, many, many big WWE stars when that was uh, their plan. Yeah, and another a per- another perfect example is the current WWE champion, Drew McIntyre. Mm-hmm. He, you know, when he yep. was released, he went on the indies and he went to Evolve and he had some yep. really good matches and got better and then he eventually came back to WWE and look at where he is now. He's on top of the mountain. Yep. So, I think that's a good... I not agree more. Yeah, I think that's a good lasting impact on wrestling is you know so once they put up stuff on the network uh i'll probably look to see what matches to recommend to you guys to watch so please do okay so we actually had a fun night wednesday night we did we did uh aw had night one of fighter fest Oh, uh, sorry. Yes. And NXT had night one of the Great American Bash. And both did pretty good ratings-wise as far as audience goes. Mm. Um, NXT was the winner for the second week in a row as far as audience goes. They brought in 792,000, while AEW brought in 748,000. However... AEW once again won the week in the 18 to 49 demographic. AEW was a 0.29, NXT was a 0.22. To make things a little more interesting, AEW and NXT in their 18 to 49 rating finished second and third respectively on Wednesday night cable television in that department mm. for after non, for non news uh let me see i think i have it here i can tell you what it was uh it, it, would, it would be interesting to know what they competed against oh, i mean what was no, what was number one? uh hold on i i think it I doesn't see. really though <laughs> it doesn't oh, really care it was the challenge total madness Okay, never ever heard of it in my entire life. It's it's MTV. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I I thought you know I was going back and forth Wednesday night. I thought both shows were good. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's hard for me to say which one was the best. To be I, honest, I really I, yeah yeah I really much liked. Uh, the, uh, the both. Uh, it's kind of funny because I like them both for different reasons as well. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like one was very funny and one was very serious. Yeah, I mean, I mean, each one had a, a legit match or two matches that you could say, "Oh, that was the yep. best match on the show this week." Yeah, definitely. Like with AEW. Shida, Hikaru Shida, and Penelope Ford was just an oh. amazing Ooh. match. Yeah, now the women's division in that uh, company is really getting better. It is. It really is. I was I I was worried for a long time because I don't think Brandy is the way to go, and they kind of stared away from that. It seems like. Mm-hmm. And then. I, I, there's so many good matches they had. That opening tag match was really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, MJF and Wardlow with Jurassic Express. I thought that was really good. 
uh, with NXT, Oni Lorcan and Timothy Thatcher was such mm-hmm. a fun match to watch. It was just move for move, strike for strike. You know, it was just wrestling at its purest. Mm-hmm. And it was just so fun to watch. And they had a good main event with Io Shirai and Sasha Banks. Oh, yeah. So, I'm actually going to call it a tie for me. I think both... Yeah, no, I, I don't... I really don't know which one I would say won because it's so hard. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and that's I, a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Although Taz, I think, had the line of the week this week. Yeah. I like Taz in commentary. I don't care what anybody else says. I really like Taz in commentary. He cut, for those who didn't watch, he cut a promo on <laughs> John Moxley. Mm. Because... Originally, Moxley and Brian Cage were going to face off next week for night two of Fighter Fest. Right. However, and we talked about this last week, because Renee Young got sick, uh, she ended up with the COVID. John yeah. Moxley stayed home, and AEW decided, okay, until you're, you know, un- until you are absolutely, you know, both of you are negative. We're not going to bring you down, which makes sense. It, it makes definitely sense, and I would be kind of pissed <laughs> if they didn't do it like this. And Taz has one of the best lines I've ever heard. Um, mm-hmm. He called, and he didn't say the performance center by name, but you no. knew. But you knew who you he was knew talking about. What he was talking about. <laughs> Because he basically called WWE and the Performance Center, quote, a slop shop. (laughs) He's not wrong. No. He's not wrong. No, he's not. Um, so... No, I I, I really like that past six on commentary. I, I, I can understand that some people don't like him, but I really enjoy his kind of... He has some sass. Mm-hmm. I like sass. So, because of that, or or because of everything that's gone on, the Moxley Cage match has been moved to July 15th, which will be Fight for the Fallen mm-hmm. on Dynamite. And that night is going to be donating uh, money towards uh, COVID-19 charity, so... But and now we're more or less a week away from a very good AEW pay per view as well. I hope. Yeah, I mean, neck both shows look good next week because yeah. NXT has the champion versus champion winner take all match, mm-hmm. and AEW's just got a packed card. Orange Cassidy and Jericho, the eight man tag match. Yeah. Another AEW tag title defense. Yeah. It's just a really packed show. I think both shows are going to be good to watch next week. So, um, it'll be interesting to see how things go next week. So, and I'm looking forward to this pay per view. Like I said, it should be pretty fun. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's better than their last pay per view. Let's talk about real quick. Speaking <laughs> of pay per views, mm. because this was something I wanted to talk about as soon. I knew you know we were going to bring this up at some point. Slammiversary and the main event, yes, is yeah. becoming a fun mess. <laughs> That's the same mind. It is. Yes. So. To remind everyone, <laughs> the original main event of uh, Slammiversary was going to be a five-way match for the Impact title. Tessa Blanchard was to defend the title against Michael Elgin, Eddie Edwards, 
Ace Austin and Trey from the Rascals. And I would bet you a thousand dollars that she would lose it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned that because mm-hmm. guess Tess- what? Tessa's <laughs> contract mm. with Impact originally ended June 30th, so it technically ended it's out. earlier yeah. this week. Yep. However, because Mm -hmm. Tessa and Impact were having problems with each other. A little, to say it mildly. Yeah. Impact Wrestling had come to terms on the release of Tessa Blanchard. No, what a shock. It's almost like I said that. I am so surprised. So I've been really fro 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 the this week. It's like two things I said would happen happen. I said this when the stories about her fucking things up came out. Yep. They were going to release her, I said. Nobody was like, yo, I believe you, but yeah. I was right. So basically two things led to the termination of Tessa Blanchard at Impact. Mm-hmm. The racist comments. Okay, three things. <laughs> that 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 was number one, but that was yeah. That was a that story was six months ago, and I'm actually surprised that that has not been brought up recently. I mean, it, it was so out of line. Oh no, it was it was. <laughs> the second thing. Then, then it's the bullying thing. The second thing mm-hmm. is. Impact Wrestling had asked Tessa to do promos for the for the pay per view yep. while she was in Mexico with her fiance during yep, COVID nineteen. So it's like, okay, I understand. You know, you want to stay with your fiance. You know, which I understand. Can you do some promos? For the pay-per-view to hype up the match. Tessa sends zero. Not one promo was sent. (laughs) How hard... (laughs) Crow? She's so stupid. She's so spoiled. Yeah, but uh, that 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 is the problem. I have always said this. She's one of my favorite wrestlers, female wrestlers, and and she goes and fucks it up like this. I have no sympathy for her right. at all. There's absolutely no company that is interested in working uh, with her, uh, and she will. Well, we will talk we'll about talk about that in a moment. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a moment, but there's no com- com- There's no real company that would be interested mm-hmm. in working exactly. with, with, with. Let me let me say that exactly. there's no real company that would be interested in working with her, and it's the bullying thing. She's been accused of bullying. She's been accused, accused of, of saying racist uh, remarks. It's racist uh, remarks. It is so much, and she is maybe one of the best female wrestlers we have right now. And that fucking irritates the fuck out of me. It is so... It's so... ah, I want to strangle her. The thing is, this is what gets me. You can't cut two or three promos. You don't have to do a promo (laughs) every week leading out to the pay-per-view. Right. You can do one promo one week, skip a week, maybe two weeks... Do another promo, skip a week, skip two weeks, come back, do a third promo. You that, That's all you had to do. That's all you had to do. And then, I think what ultimately did her in is she tried to pull a Jeff Jarrett. Where she would not come unless she got paid X amount of money to drop the title. And Impact was like, no, nope, not going to do it. No, you know, you know, that ain't happening. So they're like, all right, goodbye. We're done. 
We strip you of the title. Now, Fro, there is, and I found this out the other day, there is one twist. There's one little catch in Tessa's contract that is absolutely hilarious. In her contract, it's stated that when she was done, she could not bash Impact Wrestling. She could not talk bad things about Impact Wrestling. Hmm. I wonder if that's going to be a thing she does anyway. Exactly. So... (laughs) That woman doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. Now, Tessa Blanchard is a free agent. Yeah, and I, like I said, no real company would hire her, Bill. Well, there is WWE. What? Really? Yep. I am so surprised. I know the AEW so name has been thrown, but I don't no. think they're going to go for it. Nope. Even though they her don't... dad is there. Right. I don't think they're going to go for oh. it. Here's the thing. I... Oh, go ahead. The thing is, uh, well, there, there's another thing as well. Her relationship with her dad has been up and down as well. Mm-hmm. So, Here's the thing, folks. Tessa Blanchard is 24 years old. 24 years old. Yeah. Impact <sighs> Wrestling. And I'm actually not blaming Impact Wrestling on this. They knew when they got <laughs> Tessa. They were getting a very good talent. Oh, yeah. They basically gave her everything on a silver platter. You want the knockouts title? Boom. We'll give you the knockouts title. You want a match with Gail Kim? Boom. We'll give you a match with Gail Kim. Uh, we're going to put you in the main event of Slammiversary against a guy. Boom. We're going to do that. We're going to put our world title on you. Boom. We did that. Yep. Yeah. Ultimately, at the end of the day, them putting their world title on her is going to look real bad. Yep. Part of it, part of it is because of how Tessa is. That That's part of it. The other part which we cannot blame Impact for at all, is the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people look back and they say, oh, Impact did a lot of stupid things, I think this one's going to be low on the totem pole because, like, half of that whole story is ruined because of the pandemic. But 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 here's the thing, it's like I don't I don't see what she would do in WWE. And I I, I find that kind of irritating. Uh I is there any news of her going to NXT first or directly into well, we, the main? We don't know yet. We don't know where she's gonna go. What is your speculation about that? She's gonna skip NXT. Yeah, I think so as well. Go right to yeah. WWE, and as I don't soon... think she, I don't think, I don't think she would be interested in having a. Con- that's that's where the spoiled thing comes out. But, I don't think she would be interested in going to NXT. To be but honest, here, but here's the thing: as soon as she gets to the main roster, yeah, and once a certain flare comes back. Yeah, she will be. That's going to be the back. feud, and it's yeah. going to be like, oh, it's Ric Flair's daughter against Tully Blanchard's daughter, who yeah. is the superior, you know, third generation, second generation right. wrestler. That's what WWE's going to do if she yeah. goes there. Yeah. Um, but if she doesn't go, I really don't know where she would go. Because I don't think Ring of Honor would want her. I don't no. think the NWA would want her. I don't no. think Major League Wrestling would want her. I don't think New Japan would want her. No, I really don't. They will. 
I yeah. think her career is over before it even begins. Yeah, and that's what's what's sad. At at twenty four years old, she has the talent. Yeah, and that's uh, that's what makes me so incredibly sad. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm, I'm happy. My favorite female wrestler at all is is uh, employed at the AEW. I mean, that makes me happy. I mean, it's almost though... like it's almost like Paige, to a degree. In a way, yes. Except, Paige is more. Paige redeemed herself. Yeah, and and she could be hard headed at times. Oh yeah, but. She did redeem herself. Yes, exactly. So, to continue with the main event of Slammiversary, another story comes out. Where, so what will be the main event? Well, we'll get to it in a minute. Yeah, okay. Where, at their latest taping for Impact, Michael Elgin and Sammy Callahan get into a fist fight backstage getting prepared for the tapings. And this was basically the last straw for Michael Elgin. Elgin is now gone from Impact Wrestling. So, we are left with three people, no champion, What's going to happen? Well, they announced on Impact this week that there will be a fourth person in the match. But it is a mystery opponent. No idea who it is. And whoever wins the match will be the new world champion. anniversary is going to be even more fun to watch. <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to Slamversary, even though I won't see her there. Right. Oh, well, that's Impact for you. I, 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 I was thinking that she would probably do it. Oh, yeah. I think it was. I, I think she was going to win the belt. Yeah. I really do. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of happy that Impact said enough is enough. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if she doesn't change her attitude, she she needs to f- grow the fuck up. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is, I'm I'm saying this with with all my heart and everything. I love that lady's wrestling ability. She's one of, like I said, one of my favorite female wrestlers of all time. Is her, and she could have been one of the greatest stars of female wrestling of all time. I'm not even kidding you mm-hmm. people. I, I, I'm I not saying that just to right. say it. But I, I actually mean that. And her wrestling ability has been proven over and over again. Her ga- uh, match against Sammy was one of the best matches I have seen. I love that match. Mm-hmm. I have seen many, many, many times. Yeah. And neither one of us are big fans of Sammy Callahan. Nope. But yet they delivered a, a great match. A fantastic match. And that was more than 50% her. Mm-hmm. At least 60-70%. So there's nothing wrong with her wrestling ability. It's just her freaking attitude is so irritating when she has all the wrestling abilities of some someone that would be the one of the greatest it's of all time. And she goes in. Yeah. Her dad and she goes is a wrestler. Spoil it all. Her grandfather was a wrestler. Her stepfather yep. was a wrestler. You know, it just... Mm. Yeah, I know. So, Fro, last week, mm-hmm. we did something interesting. We did. And I am ready for round two. Ding, ding, what are we doing? Uh, you had a list... Of the top 150 IMDb shows, or ranked by IMDb of TV shows. Yeah, 250, but that's okay. Well, it was two, yeah. 
And uh, we did 1 through 50 last week. Yeah, we did 1 to 49 at, at least. Oh, 1 to 49, okay. And the idea <laughs> was for me to guess if you Thanks. had seen the television show. And, and, and we said the whole <laughs> season. Yeah. That was the key. At least one at least one season. Right. So let's start with fifty one. Black mirror. Black mirror. I think it's a Netflix show. It is. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, it's one of my least favorite anthology TV shows, but I have seen it. Twin Peaks. I'm going to say no. Do you know David Lynch is one of my favorite directors of all time? So, yes, I have seen that. Ah. Nathan for you. No. <laughs> I've seen that as well. There's a lot of list, list I have seen. Yeah. Over the Garden Wall. Over the Garden Wall? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say yes. Nope. Ooh. This is an animated thing I have not seen. Is it on Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. I've never seen this. I never heard of it even. Ah. Uh, One Punch Man. One Pun Man from 2015. No. No. Good. Uh, Narcos. Yes. Yeah, Peaky Blinders. Yes. Mm-hmm. Black Adder. Yes. Yep. Freaking Geeks. Yes. Yep. Dark. That is a German show, by the way. Dark. 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 Just came out with its third season on Netflix this Last week? Yeah, I'm last week. I'm going to say no. That is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Ah, okay. Ah. Attack on Titan. <laughs> yes? <laughs> no. Mm. It's, just like, it's it's that animating again. Okay. Like, uh, yeah. Faulty Towers. Yes. Of course. Chappelle's show. Yes. Of course. Black Sun. Yes? No. No. <laughs> no. Sanke nad balkonum som it is in its original language. Never heard of it. So I'll say no. <laughs> well, no, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, that's Black Sun. You gave me okay, a layup. Strange. Yeah, Stranger Things. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yes. Yeah, I uh, reference that a lot. So, uh, Cold Factory from 2019. No. Nope. Arrested Development. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, I hate fucking Indian titles. <laughs> Mahabharat from 1988. No. Nope. Varti the Rod from 2017. No. No. Rome, the TV show. I'm going to say yes. Yeah. That's a highly underrated TV show, by the way. Just two seasons of that. Very. Okay. Dragon Ball C. No. Nope. Could not care. Fucking less. West Wing. Yes. One of my favorite TV shows of all time. Stainsgate. Stainsgate? Yeah, Stainsgate. I will give you a clue. It's an anime. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I've fro- ever seen an anime? I have. Um, Lila and McCoon. From 2011. No. Uh, us. Us? Like, oh, oh, set. Oh, set. Oh. Us. 
Oh, it's Oz. Oz. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think you've seen it. Yeah, I have. Bra- uh, hey, Dragon Ball C, this time from 1996. No. No. House of Cards. Uh, yes. Not the original one. Yes. Yes. Still game from 2002. No. Nope. Cobra Kai 2018. I want to say this yes. Interesting show. Yes. Have you seen that? No, but I heard it's coming to Netflix. Yeah, it's it's based on Karate Kid. Uh, I, Claudius from 1976. No. Really? You're 110% correct. <laughs> it's very long. Uh, Better Call Saul. Yes. Yep. Vine Lawn Saga from 2019. No. No, it's an animation. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm. I'm going to say you have seen it. I would be probably beaten by Luke if I sat now there. <laughs> and the Marvelous Mrs. Mars. Maisel, sorry. Yes. Mar- yes. Okay. One Strange Rock, 2018. No. Have I? Fleabag. I'm going to say yes. Mm hmm. Uh, the Boys from 2019. No. I have. Ah. Bojack Horseman. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <sighs> Jesus, Jesus Christ. Indian shows. Uh, Sarabai versus Sarabai from 2004. I'm going to say no. No. Okay, here here's an interesting one. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, but the nineteen eighty four version. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that you have seen it. I have not. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh-huh. Justice League Unlimited. You might have seen that one. No, I have not. Ah. <laughs> Animated show. The Jinx, Life and Death of uh, Robert Durst. No. Yeah, I have. Mm. Westworld? Yes. Yeah, I followed it for a season on my podcast. It would be kind of funny if I said no. Right. <laughs> The Thick of It, 2005. The Thick of It. No. I have to actually look that up. I'm like, have I ever seen this? doesn't look anything like I would see. No, I have not seen this. Okay. Okay. It's a comedy show. I've never heard of it. Okay. Uh, Demon Slayer. Uh... Kamitsu no Yabba from 2019. No. Nope. Six feet under. Yes. Yeah. I would be very surprised if you said no. I think I have said 16 times that is that is one of my favorite TV shows. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is... Uh, uh, you will like 99, by the way. Uh, but we're 98 now. The Promise Neverland. I'm going to say no. No. But uh, have I ever seen South Park, you think? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to take a wild guess Mm. and say yes. Mm. Mm. Have I ever seen South Park? Yes. And number 100, The Simpsons. I mean, if you've seen South Park, then you've seen The Simpsons. Uh, Of course I have. (laughs) <laughs> and that is uh, up to a hundred. Phew. Phew. That is quite a lot. Um, we actually have breaking news to uh, report. Just okay. came across here on uh, the old wire. As soon as I pull it up, I will read this to you guys. Uh, the Wrestling Observer noted that Ring of Honor has decided to let Bully Ray's contract expire. 
He yeah, wasn't given a new offer. Right now, ROH isn't offering anyone new deals. Bully Ray is gone from Ring of Honor. Oh, that's uh, that's um, sad. I liked Bully Ray. You know what? He was good. Um, he, yeah, was, he was very good, good in TNA. You know, in Ring of Honor, and I thought he did yeah. a lot to help some of the younger talent out. I think he was even better in TNA. Oh God, TNA. yeah. No, no, no. He he was definitely yeah. better in TNA, but for Ring of Honor, you know, he you know mm. Flip Flip Gordon is like the perfect example of right young talent he helped put over. So, oh, definitely. Um, want to bring up this news? We actually have good news for once in the world of wrestling. Okay. If you watched Dynamite this week, you may have noticed a referee was not at Dynamite this week. And that happened to be one Bryce Remsburg. Well, there's good news why he wasn't there. Because on Wednesday, he and his wife welcomed their second child into the world. Uh, he is seven pounds, seven ounces, 19 inches long. That's a, that's a good sized baby. Yeah. Uh, no word on the name, but this is his second son. So congratulations to Bryce and his entire family, his wife, everyone for, uh, the birth of their second child. That is good. Maybe maybe the Remsburg clan will be the next great wrestling dynasty. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. That would be pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to get serious for a minute because last week we really went in depth about Chikara shutting down Mm -hmm. and uh, Mike Quackenbush and you know, the stuff that came out and you know, I honestly thought like after days after we did that show, that was one of the best like episodes. I think that the the show has ever done. I agree. I'm just saying that in general Mm -hmm. on Saturday, Mike Quackenbush came out with a near 14 minute video going on a case by case situation every accusation there has been some of the stuff that he brought up he takes responsibility for and other stuff he has said that he was not there for, would not know. And, you know, it was just a a lot of stuff. I watched the video when it came out. Saturday. There... Okay, I want to say this without pissing anybody off. The way the video was edited had Mm. me a little sketchy. Was it very heavily edited? I have not seen this video, so I really want to, but... You could tell where they take um, breaks. Yeah, I. here's the thing. Here's my problem with that. If they w- uh, didn't, like, cut it, I would trust it as a source, but since they had edited it, it makes it harder to... Let me see if I can get the video, and then you can watch it after you, the you, show. Yeah, but you understand what I mean, though? Yeah. It's oh, yeah. kind of like, it doesn't really matter. Right. Um, Because it's not the truth. We will not get the whole truth. Right. Uh, the one, th- of everything that... Uh, you know, was talked about. If there was one thing 
that I believed from him, if if there is one, it would be the autistic wrestler one. Right. Because that one he teared up on. Right. That would be the one, if I had to say that's the one I believe more than any other, that would mm. be it. Um, but again, it's like I said, there were so many cuts, you know, it was edited. I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't want to say that he lied on everything or, but the video is out there for those who want to see it. I said my piece last week and as of now, Chakara is done. Now, I want to ask you one question, Fro. Maybe you have an answer to it. Maybe you don't. Why was Ric Flair on Raw this week? Fro? Yellow? Did we lose? I think we lost. We may have lost Fro here. Fro! Uh oh, let me let me check on him. Maybe he's watching the video. Uh oh, did he put himself on mute? He sure did. He put himself on mute, folks. Oh my gosh. Come on now. Well, I guess while we're uh Sorry. Oh, there we go. I, I got the call from my dad. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. All right, so anyway, what's Ric Flair doing on Raw this week? <laughs> I don't know. Did he decide to come? Did WWE decide for him to come? I I, I don't even watch the recaps of Raw and SmackDown now because I'm so tired of it. He is 71 years old, bro. Did he wrestle? No. Okay. But still, he was on Raw this week. He is in the target age of people who could get, you know, the, the pandemic. Uh, okay. It's crazy. I, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Because Orton was not on Raw this week. Randy Orton was not on Raw this week. He actually posted a selfie of him and his wife naked. Ooh. But why is Ric Flair there? He doesn't need to be there. Mm. 71, Fro. Should not 71. be there. <laughs> Vince McMahon is there because he's just a grump. Winston McMahon is there because he thinks he couldn't get COVID-19. Exactly. He probably doesn't... He probably still does not think this is a serious thing. Even though so many agents and, you know, some talent have gotten this. Yep. (sighs) Oh, my goodness. You know what they say. Stupid is and stupid us. Stupid is as stupid does. Absolutely, freaking Lily Fro. Absolutely. One of my favorite quotes of that movie. Yep. Huh. Well, I think on that note, we are going to wrap up the show for this week. So let's get into the plugs. Oh, did we did we skip anything? No, I said in tin foil. Yep. We're going to wrap it up in tinfoil. Yeah, we are. Because, you know, we're going to take it from our picnic, and we're going to put it in the fridge, and then we're going to warm it up in the microwave the next day. <laughs> so, uh, if you have any questions or comments, send an email, wrestlingman at that wrestlingshow.com. Follow the show on Twitter at wrestlingshow11. Follow us on Instagram at re- that wrestling show. Join the Facebook group. Uh, just type in that wrestling show Facebook or that wrestling show fan group in the search bar and you were right there if you can't find us it's okay I post a link in the description of each and every episode and join the Patreon page if you like what we do here patreon.com backslash 
that wrestling show. But we are going to do something very fun soon. Yes, real soon. Um, do you, you? Well, this was your idea. Why don't you make the announcement? Well, we are going to give you Hamilton musical commentary. Yep, as soon as I return from Parts Unknown, which will be sometime next week, and then once I'm settled in and Fro and I have picked a day to do it, uh, we will do Watch Along of Hamilton. I think we always have set a date for it. Did we? <laughs> I think we, we agreed on the day you came back. Oh. Well, mm. either way, um, that'll be the next one of Fro Watches, right? Is it will. Hamilton. And you'll be you'll probably be recording on your end, so um What we will probably do is that you will record it at your end because then you would be able to hear the musical as well. Right. Because yeah. I might have my end on mute but have the closed caption. Right. And then you can have like the audio, so that, that that's probably what'll end up happening. So, we'll figure it out. We'll we'll figure it out, folks. We usually do. So um, and, and, if you like Hamilton, yeah, I was just going to say if you like Hamilton, you should really, really subscribe to that little Patreon thing. And all it takes for that is one dollar. One dollar. One dollar. Hamilton commentary. It's going to be MST3K style. <laughs> and you know what, Fro? Here's how much I'm looking forward to this. There may be a chance that my family watches it here in Parts Unknown this weekend. I'm not. I'm going to be Good. a team player. Good. I'm going to skip it. I'm going to find something else to watch. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. That'd I am very excited for this. Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, Fro, what did you and Luke discuss this week on Another Digital Citizen? Uh, we always discuss fun and good topics on Another Digital Citizen. This week was no exception because we talked about the magic stone called Shungite or Shungite or, uh, yeah. Have you ever heard of Shungite? Don't believe I have. So this this stone has said to have very good benefits, and there is a very good proof that it actually does things. It has been um, uh, said that it has uh, is uh, both uh, antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory effect. Mm-hmm. And that is actually, uh, they have looked into it and uh, they have studied it and they say, oh, that's true. But it's also sold as something that will cure cancer and you will hear me talk about that. Hmm. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this week I'm going to attempt to do these plugs without my iTunes up because I'm actually using my mom's computer to record this week, but it really doesn't matter. Check Hi, out- mom. Check out our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Morata and Michael Quinn. They really take you through the world of retro wrestling like nobody else. This week, in their up-and-comer segment, they discuss the best member of the Four Horsemen, Paul Roma. Plus, week one... Actually, that last line was sarcastic. He's not the best member of the Horsemen. Anyway, week one of the Royal Flush of the Worst Talkers. And they review an episode of AWA All-Star Wrestling from 1989. Oh boy. Sounds like a fun one. That's our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast. And while we're celebrating, or about to celebrate the 4th of July here, a certain podcast hosted by one individual decided to celebrate Canada Day this week on... Greetings from Allentown! That's right, PW, Peter Winston, he watches one episode of wrestling each week and discusses it in his own unique way. This week, in honor of Canada Day, he reviews an episode of Maple Leaf Wrestling from 1984. That is, Greetings from Allentown. 
also check out the Juice Pro Wrestling podcast and uh, the Road Home from Wrestling with our pal Drucifer Jones. They have some really good uh, project or projects and topics to discuss there. Now, if you're looking for non wrestling related podcasts, check out the Best Pick podcast with Tom, John, and Jess. They watch each and every Academy Award winning Best Picture in no particular order. This week, they discuss the Best Picture winner of 1937, The Life of Emile Zola. I've never seen that. That is a really good movie. Uh, yeah. let, let me read off the rest of the nominees. Maybe if you've, you know, heard of the others. The Awful Truth, Captain Courageous, Dead End, The Good Earth, In Old Chicago, Lost Horizon, 100 Men and a Girl, Stage Door, and A Star is Born. Ooh. And that's the original. Original. I really born. love the original. Oh. Um, I've seen The Life of Emile Zola. It okay. is fantastic. I have not. I oh, have go never out even heard of it. It is good. It really is. Um, the only... Okay, so I will say of the movies that were on that list... They got it right with the Best Picture winner. But I'm going to throw you a curveball, Fro, because there was a movie that came out in 1937 that okay. surprisingly was not nominated for an Academy Award for mm-hmm. Best Picture. Probably should have uh, that particular year. And instead got an honorary Academy Award. And that is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, good one. That's a classic. And I watched it about two weeks ago for like the first time in 25 years. Because I think the last time I saw it, I was a kid and I probably saw Mm -hmm. it at school. After the first few minutes of the movie it becomes really good what I say is what I say if it's the best animated movie ever mm, no but no but it's such a classic it is it really is I mean yeah it, it is really good uh also check out uh unspooled with Paul and Amy they watch each and every movie from AFI's list of the 100 greatest movies of all time, the 2007 edition, and they're getting close to the end of the list. This week, they discuss Jaws. Ooh. Ba, 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 ba. That's a, all I have to a say. A classic mm-hmm. 4th of July movie. Yep. Uh, also, check out The Castle Vault, where two guys watch each and every movie that is, each and every Disney animated movie that is up on Disney Plus. This week they discuss Aladdin. Mm-hmm. So check that out. The original one? The original. The original. Okay. Uh, also, uh, Shark's Pond, a South Park podcast. I watch and review each and every South Park episode. This week I discuss Smug Alert. Very interesting episode, I'll say that. I don't think I remember what that was about. I will listen to the podcast then. There you go. Uh, Also, uh, this weekend, Eliminated, a Royal Rumble podcast. We have reached the finale. Or have we? You'll have to Mm. tune in for that. Uh, Myself and Jim Boy Star and our guest, uh, Ted, we talk about We go through one more time the stats of most eliminations in a Royal Rumble. Plus, we get Ted's thoughts on which Rumbles he would have liked to have reviewed had he not chosen the one that he did back in 1992. And this was put up yesterday, but I do want to plug this. 
the latest edition of Coliseum Corner is up now. That is where I watch all the Coliseum home videos in order. Uh, The latest episode that came out is the WWF's Amazing Managers. That is the Mm -hmm. video. Um, And I actually go into detail about how the 1985 Manager of the Year contest was a farce. You'll have to hear why. So check that out. Okay, so uh, next week I return home to my home planet (laughs) Um, and we'll be back. We'll discuss more wrestling news. Uh, Hopefully, you know, we'll get more clarification on Slammiversary, maybe Extreme Rules because it's going to be a horror story. Um, Just, Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I know. I don't... I, I really, really don't know. <laughs> Am I going to watch watch that pay-per-view? Probably. Will it hurt me? Probably. <laughs> so, on that note, everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is 4th of mm-hmm. July weekend. Everybody, please, especially this weekend, be safe. If you're going to grill, please just grill at your house. Don't go to somebody else's place. And have a party because we're trying to get rid of this COVID 19. And we got a bunch of idiots that are like, oh, I think we're safe to go. We could keep doing this. No, stay home. Grill your food at home, okay? And, and watch the fireworks on TV. And when you're done doing that, come back here next week for another episode of that wrestling show, the podcast where all wrestling matters. And as always, what? What was that? What? Wrestle on.